Tuesday, and Heather has made her way, venturing, fighting that sunshine all the way here. It gets a little bright out there when that sun hits that snow, it is, doesn't it? It is bright, but the sunshine's nice. I'm not going <laughs> to complain about the sunshine. All right, so we're good with the sunshine. Yeah, definitely. So, how did you like all that snow and ice? The snow's pretty. I don't mm-hmm. like the ice. Yeah. But we didn't have as much ice as they first predicted. Yeah, absolutely they right. A quarter inch. Yeah. I'm like, Please we were, me. we were sweating bullets there for a little bit, but we were prepared and ready. And dispatch was set up and and ready to start taking calls. And our linemen were on call. I mean, we were ready, but we weren't sad that it didn't happen. Yeah, we'll, that, just, we'll just say it that way. You know, and it's not only the point that if the lines get heavy and they they fall. If you have that kind of ice storm, it may be a while for the guys can even get there because mm-hmm. you have to get there to fix it. And when right. you got super slick roads, that may not be possible. Right. And there are other people out traveling on the roads a lot of times, maybe when they don't necessarily need to be out there. And that can create accidents that then have different parts of the road closed. I right. mean, there's a number of things that can happen. But, yeah, we sure hate to hear a forecast for ice so we were happy that that didn't happen like it was supposed to and and the snow's pretty it is and i think the kids have enjoyed being out of school but i, think I was ready to go back i was ready for spring the day after christmas so <laughs> yeah, i'm you, the wrong person I remember to ask the last time you were here you said enough yeah i'm we done snow then we did yeah this was a pretty snow and it's the kids have had fun playing in it and i've seen over here you guys have one of your streets Fourth Street Hill. shut down mm-hmm. and the kids get to sled. So I'm sure they've enjoyed it, but they'll enjoy spring too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's been a while, though. I mean, for the, in all honesty, before uh, we really haven't had as much snow mm-hmm. as we used to get. Yeah, that's true. And uh, so the opportunities for that to happen, the kids always say, oh, I want to play in the snow. To me, your lies, uh, I was, we were making a comment here, and I said, everybody wants to get out there in the snow. Once they do, and they realize it's cold. You it know, it's cold. not being out in the snow in 72-degree weather. You know, right. you're in the snow, and you're out there, and you're playing, and your hands are getting cold, and your feet are getting cold. Your nose is getting cold. It's yeah. starting to run. Right. You know, you're trying to do everything you can to stay out there, and then they all run in, and then they're not going back out. <laughs> yeah. That's it for the day. Yep. So, but it's a, it's a good time. Hopefully you get a chance to enjoy it, and uh, maybe you're watching the Winter Olympics. Who knows on uh, maybe so uh, on the NBC, yeah. one of their networks, and you get a chance to see people out in the snow all the time doing those crazy things with skis and stuff. I there ain't no way I'd be doing that. Pretty amazing. Though. Oh, it's, it's it's incredible. I mean, mm-hmm. I have seen some pretty incredible things. I don't watch the Olympics thoroughly, but uh-huh. some of the stuff I I do like to watch. You know, is is when the, you just when people can showcase their talent. Yeah. You know, they had a figure skater on from Russia, fifteen. Isn't that amazing? And she is doing a for a quad revolution. Quad. Nobody does a quad. And, and she got 15. legs. I mean, she's like six one at fifteen, and her legs are at least four and a half feet. I mean, and that they, talented what, of a and skater. Yeah, and she got all the spring in those legs and. She gets up there high and then just lands as smooth as can be. And it's, she did fall one time, and I thought, wow, so what? So she made the first two. Right. <laughs> Look how many times <clears throat> you have to fall to be able to learn to do that. Sure, sure. And the same thing with those, the you know, the uh, extreme skiers and stuff, when they get up there and they flip and roll. Doing and their stuff. stunts, You yeah. know, the bad thing about that is you come down your head, you may not get, get another chance. Up. Yeah. That's always been my thing. And if you're up there and or you go off the side or something goes wrong or wind, mm-hmm. anything goes wrong up there, it's just kind of crazy. And then I've seen a lot of people crash this year. And once they hit and they land, they can't hold the landing. And they wipe out. And you're going 100 miles an hour or maybe somewhere between 60 mm-hmm. and 100. And that cannot feel good. I think that's why they say no guts, no glory. Well, okay, whatever. <laughs> but that's just... To me, I remember skiing up at Hidden Valley on the uh-huh. moguls, and they just beat the daylights out of my knees. I said, why would anybody want to do this? Why? Huh. And it just was crazy. Huh. But anyway, be that as it may, that's not what we're here to talk about, not the Olympics. We're here to talk about Inter-County. This is February. This is the month 
for the Junior Essay Contest it is. the month. Yep. They have to have it submitted the month for you to write that 250 to 500 word essay. The month to get it submitted and the month to enjoy the opportunity to figure something out on your own about the topic this year, which is really a pretty easy topic. It is. Um, so what we're asking the juniors, this is for high school juniors only, what we're asking them to write about are just some ways that they could save energy at home. That's hard. It Well, I mean, <laughs> I'd like to think it's not difficult, but, um, you well, know. Well, don't give any hints. Let them figure it out. No. Uh, but well, that's it. That is the topic. How to save energy at home. Yeah. Share some ideas with us. And and we talk to the students when we go, and we do give them ideas while we're there. You know, and I've, what I've tried to do is stress to them to not overthink the topic. We're not asking them to come up with this new, ingenious, never-before-heard-of idea on energy conservation. And how can I save? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to invent this new something. I mean, they, they overthink things. Let's be honest. We want it to be easy. <laughs> okay. We do not want them to have an excuse to not write this essay. So right. um, we've just told them, walk through your home. You're going to find little things that you can do that would save energy. Maybe it's something as simple as actually turning off the light in the room when you're not in it, like your parents have probably always what? told you to do. Um, if you feel a draft around windows or doors, you could get better weather stripping or get those sealed. I mean, now's not the time to be caulking around your windows, but... Um, on when it gets warmer, remember because springtime is coming. It will be warm enough actually to do it today, but it won't be able to set up. So no, you no, really don't want no, to. No, do don't do it today. But you know these kids, they can walk through their home. Is the thermostat set at seventy two? Could you kick it down to seventy and put on a sweatshirt? You know, little you, things. You may actually find out you don't notice the difference at seventy. Yeah. Yep. You really don't. I mean, once you get used to it, it really is not a big deal. And mm -hmm. the whole thing is, is that was the Heather, when you come in from 15 or 18 degrees outside and it's 70, 70 feels it good. Feels pretty warm. It does. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully we've got good participation this year. We spoke to, Karen and I went and spoke to Salem actually a few weeks ago and they had an assembly for the juniors in the cafeteria and we had a chance to talk to them. And I think we had several that were very interested. They had some questions and, and that was always, you know, that's good to see that they're engaged and hopefully... They'll get the essay written, and they get that turned in, and then the school, they blind judge those. They separate those mm -hmm. cover sheets from the essays and number them, and then they have faculty there at the school. They read those and rank them and determine the top three. The top three then will come to Intercounty, and then we'll do a final judging. We'll determine top place and the two runners-up, and then this year we're – like we talked about last month, we're getting to send them back to D.C. and Jeff City. So that's that's really exciting for us. And I know the kids may not feel excited yet, but once they get out there, they will. They don't know what they've won They're yet. still sledding down a hill. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about something to do in June and July. So uh -huh. it's not, they're not thinking about it a whole lot yet. but Probably not. But again, the, the submission is important because is. just thinking about it or even taking notes about it is nothing until you write it and submit it. Mm -hmm. And it is due in the schools. Did Salem give you a date that they want to turn mm -hmm. in? No, we leave it up to each school. Okay. So most of them have been around February 20th to 25th, right in there. I'm you know, that say. last week of February, that way they have time to read those and determine the top three. But definitely check with your school and find out if you're a high school junior. If you have a junior in school, encourage them to write the essay. We made sure every junior had a brochure in their hands. We left extras with the teacher. We gave the teacher links um, those have been shared to their Google Docs, their Google Classrooms in a lot of the schools. So if you have a junior, they should have the information. And if they don't, we will get it to you, and you can share it with them. There you go. Because we, we want them to, to write the essay. But again, they must be turned in by the due date established by the school. So That's Salem's right. may not be the same as Lickings, which may not be the same as St. James. It mm -hmm. may not be the same as Rolla or Raymondville. 
they may all have a different date. Now, we do know that they all have to be submitted before the end of the month, but each school will need to have that submission done by their due date so that it can be reviewed right. and then passed on to intercounty, and they will get them 1st of March, mm-hmm. and they will then go through those and, and invite those people to come and speak to the... I guess governing board that you're going to have to make determinations of who's going to go and not go go to the big trip, go to the lesser trip. But neither trip's a bad trip. Yeah, they're both really good opportunities. And I'll tell you, a lot of times the students, you can tell they're disappointed when they've not won that D.C. trip. And and that's the top prize. That's what you're shooting for. But they come back from that Jeff City trip. If I don't win the lottery, I get disappointed. So why wouldn't you? Yeah, but if you get a... $2 Two dollar winner, you know. You well, can... if I get a two dollar winner, I don't feel as bad. You right. Get my money back, but right. you know the thing is though, when you don't win the DC trip, it's it's like winning the big lottery, and yeah. then you get the consolation prize. But the consolation prize is a good prize. It is. It really is. And the kids that go on that trip, they come back and they tell us, "I'm glad this is the trip I want to went on. I had such a good time, and I made friends, and mm-hmm. we did a lot of really cool stuff, and." You know, we want both trips to be. We want educational. Yes, we want them to be memorable. educational. We want them to be fun. We want the kids. We want them to learn in a fun environment. Right. And and they really do that on both trips and whichever trip they end up going on, they're gonna have a good time. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like fun. So contact your school if you don't know if Absolutely. your junior hasn't told you about this contest yet. Maybe they weren't there that day that they had the assembly, but whatever. You can get in touch with uh, Salem R80 School mm-hmm. or St. James High School or mm-hmm. Morella High School, whichever school they attend. And this is not exempting any homeschool students. If you're a homeschool student in the Salem District, you go by Salem Rules, right? Right. So whatever school district you reside in, that's where you'll turn your essay into. And you'll have to abide by their due dates. And you would just be treated like any other student there at the public school district. Your essay's turned in. You'll have the cover sheet just like they do. It'll be separated, the um, essay numbered, and, and judged right along with the, with the other you'll students. You'll feel like a number. That's all you'll yeah. be, another number. Yeah. Or they might letter them. I don't know. Another IRS file. I'm sure they number them, though. (laughs) (laughs) Whichever way they want to do it, it doesn't make any difference. What it is, is a blind test so that no teacher or whoever is reading that uh, Mm -hmm. essay has any influence and they will know who it is. So it's it's really a good way of doing it. And we wish whatever juniors turn in their essay whoever they may be the very best of luck whatever school district they might be in absolutely and uh, winning one of these trips again there's a total of three one dc trip two jeff city trips for each school for each school now you're telling me that most of the co-ops usually only have three winners one to dc and two or maybe not even that well, each, I mean, each co-op is handles different. it their own way. We've sure. got some that send one to D.C. and one to Jeff City. Yep. We've got some that might send three or four to D.C. and a couple to Jeff City. I mean, it's depending on how much their board approves to spend on the youth tour program sure. determines how many students they can sponsor on each trip. And we're really fortunate. Our board is very supportive of our area youth and they want to make sure that this is an opportunity exactly. that the kids have and and they've just decided hey we have nine high schools in our area we want to sponsor one kid from each school to go to dc and two to go to jeff city so it's really good odds for the kids because unlike at other co-ops they don't have to compete against other juniors at other area schools. high schools yeah. they're just competing against the juniors there at their school so it's a really huge opportunity and like you mentioned when we first started talking about this, 250 to 500 words, that's that's a page. 15 minutes, half hour most, of, you would think. Of, in, you know, invest mm-hmm. that little bit of your time. It's a really good return. But you want to make sure it, it's written well. You want to make sure that that's it right. gets your that's point right. across. How do you save energy at home? Mm-hmm. There's a number of different ways. 
For example, shut off your monitors. T- you're you're working on your computer, and you've got a mm-hmm. a, a a PC. You've got a you've got a desktop unit. Maybe you got your laptop there. You know, you can always shut that monitor off if you want to. Other little things. Find a central charging station here that mm-hmm. you can charge all of your electronics right. on, not just eighteen different plugs going in. Yeah, it'll work. It's a lot of ideas. And you have a lot of vampire, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. what we call vampire electric usage where you can't see it. And it just continues to trickle out all the time. Right. You know, that's always out there. You, somebody says, well, what are you talking about? How about your clock on your microwave? That's what we call phantom power. Phantom power. I got called yep. vampire. Well, energy s- vampires. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks the energy right out. Coffee machine. The programmable coffee machine that you have the clock on, that you program your coffee every morning at 5.05 to come on. So you got a hot cup of coffee that morning. And we're not saying you don't, don't not to to use those things. Well, that's true. (laughs) Just to be aware of what's using energy in your home helps you make better decisions on what's important, what's not, and what could you, where are some areas that you could save. You could give up your Xbox. Yeah, I'm curious to see if any of the students write about their gaming consoles. Yeah, they need to shut them off. Because they eat a lot of electricity. They do, they do consume a lot of energy, and and that is a big energy hog, especially when we're talking about phantom power. Mm-hmm. When those are left on, they do use a significant amount. Sure. And I'm just curious if any of them will learn that while they're writing these essays. Probably gaming while they're thinking of it. (laughs) Maybe. Maybe. Interesting. Very interesting. But there are a number of different ways. So think about it. Have uh, maybe sit down with your youngin and talk about it. See what the ideas they have. Right. Then put it down on paper and then have them write an essay. It'd be a good idea. It's that simple. really is. Pretty easy. Get it submitted. Doesn't do any good to write it down and not turn it in. That's right. You got to get it turned in and turned in by the due date. So... Make sure you contact whichever school district it is that you're in and okay. find out that due date. Well, doesn't that sound like fun? I think so. And look, they've been home with all the snow. They got they've had nothing that else is, to do. That is right. That's really good. I mean, they've had some free time. They have had free time. Now five straight days of free time. Plus the weekend. That's seven straight days they've been off. Surely they've all wrote one, right? Surely they should have, and I don't <laughs> stop calling them Shirley. But, you know, the idea is is that absolutely. It's an opportunity you don't want to pass up. I wish this had been available when I was that age because I definitely, I'd have, I'd have wrote four of them, put them in different names. <laughs> <laughs> to be like, oh, same guy, won all three trips. Yeah. What do you know? <laughs> yes. Yes. Not sure how he's going to go I, to I, Jeff I, City I, twice. <laughs> the same week. But. Well, I might have to forfeit that one. Yeah, I think you probably have to give it up. Wouldn't that be funny if somebody? That would probably not be. That's not really fair to anybody else. I mean, if you put it in somebody else's name, then you wouldn't technically. Yeah, then they would. Then they, they, would they go, go. But yeah. Anyway, just write your own essay. Just, yeah. Get just it turned keep in. Keep it simple. Yeah. Don't, you don't want to take all the glory away from somebody else. Let them do their own <laughs> essay. Yeah, you bet. Very good. All right. So that's going on this month. And guys, that, that will uh, not be around much longer if you take that opportunity to go ahead and get that submitted. That's right. I think we're already at February 8th. I would say within the next two weeks, most everybody's going to start collecting them. Make sure you get them in on time. Mm-hmm. And follow whatever instructions that your counselors tell you to do to make sure that you get those submitted. That's right. It's that easy. All right. So you're going to... In April, we're going to have a little rate adjustment, aren't we? We are. Yep. We've done this the last couple of years. Several years ago, our board decided they wanted to they wanted to change our rate structure to better reflect how intercounty is billed for for electric. for electric. Mm-hmm. And so, what we've been doing is each spring, and springtime is a good time because it's when usage is typically the lowest for our members. And so we don't want to ever have any type of rate adjustment or anything in the middle of 
a hot summer or cold winter when usage is maybe higher um, just makes it harder on on families that are trying to budget so springtime is a good time and in April again this year we are going to have a rate adjustment we're going to increase the service availability by a nickel a day but we're decreasing the kilowatt hour rate so what you pay for the kilowatt hours that you use will be less and then what you pay for your daily usage or your daily service availability service. will be um, just a tad bit higher. But when we look at our average member who, use, who uses right around 1,200 kilowatt hours, it's almost a, a complete wash. wash. And, and that's the intention. We're not trying to increase revenues for the co-op. I mean, we're not for profit anyway. And when we make more than what we need, we're giving it back to the members. So there's no intention of of increasing what we bring in. Really, the rate adjustment is designed to help with, you know, I mentioned really hot summers or really cold mm -hmm. winters. Weather fluctuations sometimes can cause drastic swings in what we do bring in. Right. You know, if it's, talk super about last February. Yeah. We've, we've had some cold days. We have. Um, but last year, just those two weeks of sub-zero or sub-freezing weather anyway, we had some really high electric bills because there was increased usage. So the revenue that came in that month was a lot higher than what we had budgeted. Um, you know, and then if you have a really mild summer, then revenues that you're bringing in are much lower. And we've got to make sure there's good cash flow that the um, co-ops bills can be paid. And, and this just helps ensure that 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 financial stability is kind of mm -hmm. um, reflective of of how we budget and how our bills come in and how we pay our own okay. energy bills. And, you know, it's a change, but I think our members the last couple of years have, have seen how this works and, and not seen a, a drastic change in their overall amount that they pay to the co-op. So hopefully there's not a lot of concern with it, but as always, if there is, you know, we encourage our members to call in. And but talk if to you us. use a lot of electricity, it benefits you. you it does, you, you yeah. You actually pay a little bit less. Right. If you're a high energy user, you will have a cheaper bill. Now, our members that just have meters out there that they're not using anything at, you know, say they've got a cabin that they keep sure. power to year round, they're not going to see that savings necessarily from the decreased kilowatt hour rate, but they'll see that. Um, service availability increase, which, you know, even if you didn't use any kilowatt hours, you're looking at a dollar fifty, dollar fifty a month <gasps> increase if you just see the increase to service availability as opposed to seeing any type of savings from the KWH you can't decrease. Even get a bottle of water at Bush Stadium for a dollar fifty. I don't know if you can get anything at Bush Stadium <laughs> for a dollar fifty. Yeah. But <laughs> You know, we realize it's not a huge change, but we just want to make sure we're being transparent and that our members know sure. that the rates are being adjusted and and communicate that with them in enough time. That That's an easy way to do it, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. when you do it in the spring between heating seasons and air conditioning seasons, it's a good time. It is. Yeah. You know, and as I mentioned, we're not for profit. We're not trying to bring in extra money. We're all part of the team. We are. And, yeah. and you pay it, I pay it, we all pay it, right? Right. So just just adjusting how we bill what we normally build and and it should come out fairly even and like you mentioned, if you're a big energy user You'll come out you're gonna ahead. you're gonna see a little bit of a savings. So Okay, very good. One of the things that, you know, with these rate adjustments and we always you know want to remind people is you can, I don't want to say circumvent it, but levelize your billing. If you're ever afraid of the rate adjustments, mm -hmm. levelize your billing. And that really just kind of just wipes this whole thing out. You won't even notice it because they're going to set the rate and it's going to be at this place. So if it goes up a nickel here or down a nickel here, until you get it all at the end of the year and they say, okay, this is where you stand, you're not going to feel it. It won't bother you, right? right? We and have, they don't make any changes on the levelized billing. Right. With we this. have a lot of members that really appreciate having that levelized billing They're option beautiful. because it's a great budgeting tool. You betcha. You do have to have had service with Inner County for at least 12 months right. at that location. How else are you going to figure an average? Because that's what we do. We figure the average usage and we take those high months and, 
and the low months and everything in between. And we find that average and that's what we set you up for the next year. Now I do want to warn, um, cause every year we have a handful of members that this happens to your on love lies billing. Let's say we've set your bill at $150. Mm-hmm. That's your average bill. And then they add a pool. What? Or they change out their gas furnace for an electric furnace. And then they, then it gets too cold for the heat pump. And Ooh, the and thing. the electric backups on. You know, they make some big changes in their in their home, but they just keep not paying attention to that electric bill because it's $150 a month. I like it. You'll still get a bill in the mail, or if you're paperless billing, you'll get that um, bill emailed to you through Smart Hub, and you can take a look at what you're actually using. And I would encourage you, even though Love Lives Billing is convenient and it's a set amount, and a lot of members pair Love Lives Billing with Bank Draft mm-hmm. so that it's the same amount every month and it's drafted. So it's kind they of. You never see it, never. No, they don't think about it. Out of sight, out of mind. But if you make major changes like that in your home, your usage is going to increase. I mean, we talk about that when we talk about energy tips, you know, how to save. We just talked Mm -hmm. about phantom power. As it gets closer to summer, we will talk about um, pools and the increased usage. And in the winter, we talk about space heaters. We do keep track of your actual usage. And then on that 13th month, we take a look at what your new average is, and we adjust that. So if you've added electric heat and the pool and a bunch of stuff, your average is going to have increased. Right. And so, so it's not your new average of dollars. It's your new average of usage. Right. And so we'll have to recalculate that. Now, the same is true if you've made some changes. Maybe you had a pool and an electric heat, and you got rid of the pool, and you've installed a a heat pump instead of just electric furnace, you're gonna, your usage is going to have decreased. And so the Love Lies bill amount will be reflective of that. But or if you build a field of dreams back there with all those lights. With all the lights, yeah. <laughs> your average will probably increase. Yeah. But More than likely. Just, just be mindful to at least take a look at that bill when it comes in to say, oh, yeah, look, you know, I'm on track or something's getting out of hand. What? Why is right. why is my usage higher? High. And if yeah. you haven't done anything, right? This then is also you'll know. a good way. And then you say, wait a minute, you know, hey, I I noticed that uh, my usage went way up, mm-hmm. but I haven't added a new room on my home. I we haven't done anything different. We haven't put in a pool. We haven't right. We don't use inflatable everything for every holiday or weekend, right? Okay, so why is it going up? Well, there could be a number of reasons why. Number one, maybe you got a bad element in your water heater. Right. And it's running all the time, and it's just it's It makes a out. noticeable difference on Absolutely. your usage. Absolutely. So keep an eye on that. Mm-hmm. You may, uh, if you have an outdoor light, some people had outdoor lights put up, and if that shorts out, maybe you don't even see the light anymore. Well, it might have shorted out. If it shorts out, it may be kicking a little bit of electric out there all the time. Another one that we see a lot is if you have a well and that well pump is giving you some problems. It may still be working. It's just running and running and running. And and that can, you know, result in some increased usage too. So yeah, just keep an eye on what you're actually using. We know Love Lies, excuse me, we know Love Lies and budget billing together is a really good combination you don't have to really think about us. No. Nope. You know what your bill is going to be and you know it's going to be paid for. But it doesn't hurt to take a look at that and just kind of make sure you're staying on track, especially if you haven't made any changes. If you have, then you know it is going to be it's off. It's going to change. Yeah. It will change. And it, it's, a, it's a great tool. It's a great budgeting tool. So go ahead and mm-hmm. find out more about it. They can send you all the information. You can just call member services. <laughs> it's really easy to do. And... Then also, if you just go to your smart hub, you can also look at the usage there, find out more about that. You know, and a lot of people we really haven't mentioned in a couple of months, but if you're new to the area and you want to get electric service and you're a new customer to Inner County, you may want mm-hmm. to prepay that electric to keep an eye on it before you you know have to put that deposit down. A lot of people right. don't have that money and they're moving in a new place. Mm-hmm. You can prepay the electric and you can monitor that. 
Right. Prepay is a really great tool, too. Um, just a different billing option. It's kind of a pay-as-you-go option, sort mm-hmm. of like putting gas in your vehicle and watching that fuel gauge to know when you're getting low and, and add more. And it makes you more mindful of your usage, I think. You know, instead of driving to town three different times during the day, maybe you make one trip to town and, and get everything sure. you need. The same is true when you're on prepay electric. When you see that gauge, if you will, you think, well... Maybe keeping the thermostat at 70 is a much better choice than 72. Much better choice. Or tell the children not to sit and open the refrigerator and look inside to see what they want to eat or drink. Yeah, or stand with the door open. For 15 minutes. The front door. Especially when you have the heat on and the refrigerator is not heat. Yeah. It's not warming it up. It's cooling it down. So, you know, you definitely want to make sure that. But it's really a good tool to help you. Learn about conservation of the energy that you are going to need in the house. Because as you see it going down, hey, guys, you know, hey, we need to drop that temperature down to 66 to help us save a little bit of money. Well, and as you mentioned, too, one of the big benefits of prepay is that you don't have that security deposit that's required when you set up service for the first time. And when you're moving, if that's the situation, there's a lot of costs associated with moving. And we know that. And we wanted to make sure there was an option that made it easier for people. And prepay is really great in that aspect because then you don't have to pay the deposit. True. I did want to bring up Generlink only because we had the threat of an ice storm. And I always know that we we probably bring this up more than we do a lot of different topics but it is very important that people understand that i saw a lot of people with generators out there in their trucks just in case well it is a just in case thing mm-hmm. but general Link is a great way to ensure the safety not only of your own home when you have a power outage but also the guys who are coming out to fix that power outage and that general Link is available and it's very inexpensive but very important it is important i do want to mention though you know, last week when the threat of this weather was coming in, we had people calling the day that the weather yeah, was supposed sure, to why come not? in. You guys got plenty of and, time. And asking if we could come and install the Generlink. That is a process. Please know that. Um, we've got to come out and look at your generator because those generator plugs are different for different mm-hmm. sizes, different brands, different models. So, first of all, we got to figure out what we need for your generator. Then we have to order that. And if you've had to order anything lately, you probably know where I'm going with this. They don't come in super fast. So please. I'm still waiting. For a shipment of something, I'm sure. Four months now. And every. For one piece. For one piece. One piece. Supposedly it's going to be shipped this week. Oh, well, that would be nice. This is the third notice I've gotten that's going to be shipped. All right. This week. Haven't got it yet. Yeah. And that's kind of the problems that we're running into with mm-hmm. some of this stuff. So if you have a generator, you know, the threat of last week's storm is over and you think, oh, I don't need it now. Contact us now so that we can get everything in order. So Trust that me, there will be another time. There will be another time. And we want to make sure not only that the stuff inside your home that you're powering from that generator is is safe being safely um, energized and and won't be damaged when the power comes back on but most importantly we want to make sure that our guys back on the line they're not having to deal with any type of back feed that they're safe while they're out there working in the weather trying to get your power back on so yes contact us no don't expect for it to happen the same day (laughs) if that so in a nutshell that's what I have to say about General Link. Well, and it's very, very important. We wanted to get that out, though. General Link is a neat thing. Please think about this way ahead of time. But also, uh, we, we talk about this with the engineers in your county. If you want to put in your house, if you're building a house and you want to have a generator, mm-hmm. or maybe right that's now. A, that's the best time to do it. That is the best time to do it. Or maybe now. Maybe you have a house and you're thinking, you know, I've got this freezer full of FFA hogs and and steers Mm -hmm. and deer and this walk-in freezer. Boy, I sure don't want it to go out if we lose electric. No, you don't. Yeah. You probably right now with the price of meat and everything, you probably have, you probably put it in there a thousand. It's worth 20 now. Right. A small fortune in your freezer. So you don't want to lose that freezer. So you may think about having 
a size of a generator figured out for you because you may not know and don't go to some sales guy and say yeah i got this 12 by 10 deep freeze <laughs> that i've got in the back of my house what's it going to take and they say you one that's going to cool off a square foot or a cubic foot, uh, it don't be enough. Yeah. You definitely want to make sure that you have the right size generator, backup generator for that. And there is some people you can call for that. And it's not Ghostbusters. <laughs> You're talking about our people, aren't I'm you? I'm talking about the people from Intercounty. They will come out and they'll assess what you need and tell you the size generator that you would need for that particular refrigerated unit you might have or maybe for specific outlets in your home maybe you don't want to lose your refrigerator maybe air conditioning is very important maybe you have somebody who is ill and they need to have a constant flow of oxygen and things of that nature where you don't want that electric mm -hmm. to go off for any reason whatsoever you can have that put on one room if you want to right and we don't do a whole lot of that anymore there's not as many people that ask for that, really. But a lot of times, a simple conversation. If you call in, um, we can connect you with somebody that you can tell them what type of freezer mm -hmm. you do have and those types of things that you do want to run. And we can give you a ballpark of what size you need. And that way, you at least, when you're shopping for that, you're armed with a little bit of information and, and know what, what size you're looking for. You'd be for. surprised how much stuff you have. That's oh, why yeah. you're talking about these youngsters right now. How do you save money? But you'd be surprised how many things you have plugged in. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That you probably don't think too much about. Yeah. And you may only use seasonally. That's true. But when you're first talking about it, you're not even remembering you use it seasonally. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, you get to the seasonality of that and say, yeah, go ahead and we'll put those four plugs on it, and that's all we need. But it's a... <laughs> that's yeah. probably the wrong thing to say because then when you go plug in something else maybe you work in your garage in the summertime and you have a little portable fan out there when i say little portable maybe you have some big old fans shop out there fans yeah blowing the air around okay and you don't put that on backup generator and you get it gets a little too hot the electric shuts off something happens you can't even go out in that garage you're gonna melt you know yeah grant you it's not an air conditioning unit but you don't have any backup yeah it can happen a lot of a lot of situations that could pop up that you're not prepared for do the easy thing call member services what's that number heather you can reach us toll free at 866-621-3679 and you can do it through your smart hub too you can if you already have it yep send us a message that way or pop in one of our offices rolla licking or mountain grove and we can get you connected with the right person there you go some good stuff. Take to heart. Really is uh, very, very important. Now, speaking, though, of not only Generlink and mm -hmm. thinking ahead, isn't it nice to know we sit here and we think ahead? We have a lot of people who are thinking about building new homes this summer. Okay. I hope you have a contractor lined up. I <laughs> hope you have a contractor lined up. First, I hope they can get the materials in, right. too. But. One of the things you may need to know before you ever determine where that house is going to be is, is there electric service to that home? Right. And it's very... And how close it might be. Yes, because that's going to determine a cost, which is a big factor, I would think, when you're trying to decide on a location to, to build your home. You would think. There's going to be a lot of costs of that new home, especially There's, with all the changes in yeah. materials and things. Yeah. But... The idea is you may see that power line. It's right across the, the river, right on the other side of the street. That means nothing. Yeah. So I think what Stan's trying to say <laughs> is reach out to us now. If you know that's kind of on your radar for this upcoming year, we can come out. We can take a look at where the closest lines are. We can look at easements and see if we have easements to be able to bring it from right across the river to mm -hmm. to where you're at. Um, probably not across the. Probably across the street. Let's product, stay with let's the street. Let's say street. I'm like that does yeah. Stream. <laughs> there you go. Maybe a small stream across the field. There we go. Here across we go. That sounds across more the right. Meadow. I always like the term meadow. It's so 
We don't always have an easement to bring you power from the closest pole to your new location that you're needing electric service to. And that's not something that you want to find out after you've gotten things started. Sometimes we run into situations where we have to bring it the long way. Mm -hmm. And there is a cost associated with that. So we want to, we, we want to make it as easy and as affordable to you as we can, but we are at the mercy sometimes of other landowners who may or may not want to, to give an easement. So yes, let us know ahead of time. This let is us a good be time part of that right now. planning. The engineers can come out, they can take a look, they can draw out what needs to be built, then they'll get that to um, our crews. We can make sure we have what we need to, to get that built out to you, get you on the schedule. It's kind of like the Jenner link. It Don't is. call us the day you need it because we're not going to be able to get out there and deliver what you're expecting. But Heather, and, wouldn't it be smart for some, a proposed home builder to have a couple or three different options on their property, you know, because you may think that this is the ideal place. Oh, I want to put that house here no matter what. Okay. No matter what it costs, because mm -hmm. it may not be a cost, but you know, maybe you have three options. Okay. Let's see if we put it on this side, maybe we're in the back corner, the right side, maybe we're in the front left corner, or maybe we're right in the middle mm -hmm. of the property. Let the engineers know that and say, look, which is the most efficient way to get electric here? Because every one of those is going to add poles. It's going to add costs. Mm -hmm. There's going to have to be wires run, especially if you're in the middle of area of there is no electric around you whatsoever. You know there's going to be a cost. Mm -hmm. So if you give them three options, they can give you the price it's going to take to run that, and you might be surprised. Yeah. You know how much that's actually going to cost. Or maybe there's a better way to run it from the back side of the property and the front side of the property to where it might save you some money. Right. But the engineers will schedule a time to come out and meet Absolutely. you at your location and and kind of sketch out what you're thinking. And they'll go back to the office and get back they with They crunch you. the numbers. Yeah. And they'll provide them They do them a good job at that. But don't make any decisions ahead of time until you do that. You know, so if you are building a home, don't sit there and say, yep, I already talked to Inner County. They're going to run that electric wherever we want to on our property. Well, they will. But if you're figuring that's lesser cost in the back part of the property, don't start digging the foundation in the front. Yeah. Again, just make sure you've got the information you need. Make an informed decision. Yeah. Sit down, write everything down with your, your contractors. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have to get a well dug, make sure that you, you get with them. Make sure there's water available where you want to. Mm -hmm. And also sanitation is big now because you've got to have that right. sanitation taken care of. In many cases, you're required to get it to run into a, a system. Mm -hmm. In other cases, you're not, but you're going to have to have... You still have to have a solution. A solution to mm -hmm. your problem. And little ponds anymore are not that solution. They don't let you do that anymore. So yeah. aeration ponds, we all call them. They're always too close in the summer and too far in the winter, just mm -hmm. like your outhouse. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. But if you have a problem with them, it's, uh, that used to be a big solution. People used to send their waste way far away. Until it gets clogged up, backed up, and you got a problem. Because then animals like to crawl in those pipes and hmm. get Sounds stuck, lovely. die, build a nest, whatever it might be. You know, there's there's good and bad and everything. But if you, you're going to need a septic system, do make sure that somebody who's qualified, that state's approved, because putting a septic system right now is a tedious chore. It takes mm -hmm. about six to eight months. Oh, wow. Because they have to test it. I did not realize yeah. that was such a. So it can take that long, and then you got to hope to find them anymore. Yeah. Because we always talk about materials and supplies, so don't just assume that everybody has everything mm -hmm. you need at your beck and call. Maybe five years ago that might have been the case. Not the case right now. Valid There's point. a lot of stuff goes in a house. Can you imagine there... hardware, you know, that goes on your, you know. Just your doorknobs and locks and mm -hmm. kitchen cabinets and bathroom cabinets and things. And you sit there and you find the one you want and you go to order it and it takes seven months. Yeah. A lot of planning. Yeah. So think about it, guys. And, and uh, 
have options available because you may not want to move into a house that is kind of functionless until you get a few <laughs> things in it. Yeah. It's just sitting there waiting. So and that can and that can't happen. We don't want anybody to be in that situation. Very good. All right. Okay, one of the things this time of year, because there's tax refunds coming back, is a lot of people get these wonderful offers to get things done, and there really is nothing there. It's called scams. Yes, and that was one thing I wanted to make sure we talked about today, so I'm glad you brought that up. Tax refunds. They've got ways of doing things with that tax refund you've never heard of. We, last week, mm -hmm. we had a member call, and it was really alarming to us, so I want to make sure we share this. The scammer, or scammers, they had a recording made of themselves saying, um, this is Intercounty Electric, we're calling to notify you that your bill has not been paid, and... I don't remember the exact wording, but pretty much it was a recording that said your bill's not been paid and you're on the schedule to be disconnected for non-pay. If you would like to make a payment now, please press one. And that's alarming to us because we tell all of our members, we will never take your bank account information or your credit or debit card information over the phone. We won't. We have a secure automated line. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to pay over the phone, you pay through that secure automated line. We've so talked about that. We have. And that's mm -hmm. been that's been a huge way for us to make sure that members are not sharing that information because we say, nope, we're not ever going to take it over the phone. And we do not. However, this new scamming technique where it's a recording and there's not an actual person that's taking that payment and you type it all in and I'm not techie enough to understand how they can collect that information from what you pin well, we'll in ask on your, you for your <clears throat> credit card number right but <clears throat> and they're they're recording that right and and then they're not gonna just pay your electric bill with that information. They're probably not going to pay your electric bill at all anyway. No, they're not. Yeah. But that was a new one for us, and it was alarming because we may have members that fall for that, and we certainly hope that you don't. And so please be very be very careful with who you share your bank don't account. Don't panic. With. Don't panic. And think you got to call if, right now, or oh yeah, I got to pay that right now. Oh yeah, I'll press one. <clears throat> you have our toll free number. You have our pay by phone number. Hopefully, those are stored in your phone or stuck on the side of your fridge or somewhere handy. Call us back at that number, or call the toll free um, that automated line because you don't have to make a payment on that line. You can just do a bill inquiry, mm -hmm. and it'll tell you what your balance is. But you initiate that call to a number that you know is valid and check on because you might think, well, did I pay it? Did I forget? I don't know. It's or been a busy lost month. in the mail. Or right. Did it come back? Right. <laughs> yeah. Speaking from experience there, I understand. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. But there, I mean, there are a number of situations where members could fall for that. And I just, I'm grateful that she called and let us know and encouraged her to, share that information we put that on our social media channel we encourage our members to share that but it just goes to show that these scammers they're creative and they're adapting as our messages change they are changing their techniques as well so please guard your financial information don't give that out right. because in this case they're making it sound just like oh, it yeah. was a It'd be recorded. And I'm sure when you hit one, it would probably say, please enter your credit card number and mm -hmm. please enter your expiration date. And please enter your CVV number. Mm -hmm. And then they uh, once they you. have that, they're going to have a heyday. Mm -hmm. And you never spoke to a live person no. that took that so it feels legit. You yeah. know, it's like, oh, well, it's Intercounty. They've got an automated. It's their, it's their automated line. But Our they automated don't do that. Yeah. Yeah, so they're creative. They could have really good jobs, these scammers, I think, if they would. Some of them are very smart. They've got to be smart. Yeah. Well. Some are very smart, yeah. but 
once they, if they when they eventually get caught sooner or later they will um it, it may be well they will if they continue to do it for a long enough period of time yeah. somebody will figure them out yeah however if they just do it a few times and you give them the access to it they're gonna they're gonna have a heyday the only thing you hopefully then is you're gonna have to terminate your credit card immediately because right. and, and hopefully you have some kind of protection credit card protection if somebody goes out there and charges a brand new cadillac <clears throat> on your credit card and boy you got a heck of a credit line but yeah, <laughs> yeah. nonetheless but if they go out and charge parts something of that nature new tires uh, you know, new tires now are what a thousand dollars, and mm-hmm. so you start thinking about that. Next thing you know, is hey, wait a minute. You know, they might get that first charge through, but then when they go back to use it again, mm-hmm. uh, not going to work as well. So, yeah. you know, definitely don't want to have that happen. Don't want anybody to have that happen. All right, what's special for Valentine's Day coming up? Got to be something special. It's a week away. It is a week away got to be something our members are special there you go we have well, really... how about let's just let, let's just all right instead of valentine's day that's okay. too much pressure let's go another week past that to president's day there you go how about president's day that's a pretty important one too yeah well if you first off if you forget valentine's day you're gonna be in you're trouble. probably in trouble you yeah know? so <laughs> that's not a good thing but if you go another week past valentine's day Inner County will not have their offices open, will no. they? No, we enjoy that three-day weekend. Our offices will be closed on that Monday. What is that, the 21st? Yeah, it's 21st. Yeah. So our offices will be closed. We always, even on holidays, nights, weekends, we have our dispatch center that is available 24-7. So if you have an outage or some type of emergency there is a dispatcher available, even if it's on one of these days, like President's sure. Day, where our offices are closed. You can reach someone, and and we have uh, linemen that are on call, so they know to not travel off away, uh, that they stay close, and, and they're prepared at a moment's notice to be able to head out and, and yeah, go get your power back on or whatever yeah. it might be. So that that security is always there. We're, we want to make sure that you've got power and... We're not going to tell you on President's Day that you got to wait until Tuesday. Um, definitely not something that we'll do. But yes, our regular business office will be closed. Intercounty always has people on call. We do. No matter always. what, weekends, holidays, they're always we got do. somebody on call yep. to take care of the problem. So you're not stranded. You're not going to call them, and they're not going to say sorry. We're closed for the holidays. We will be closed for the next seven days. <laughs> Uh, to celebrate somebody's birthday, we'll just you know no, Mickey Mouse's birthday. We're not going to do we, that. Uh, we feel that this is truly a tribute to the United States. We just can't work during this time. <laughs> no, that's not the case. You always have somebody there. So find a uh, uh, find a good reason to have a good Valentine's Day, and then you know the next Monday celebrate it with your friends from Inner County. They're going to be home. You for the most part. And mm-hmm. We hope that. Uh, It'll be a great day. We won't have any ice or snow. Yeah, that'd be nice. But again, don't forget Valentine's Day coming up. <laughs> I, I didn't want to um, remind everybody, we always kind of f- finalize our show with Roundup, uh-huh. that uh, you know, I was looking at your Missouri, Rural Missouri magazine, uh-huh. and I really recommend everybody do that. You know, take a look. Take a look at the intercounty section. You can do it online you can. at Smart Hub. But you can also do it from the magazine you receive. And look at the usage. And I thought the usage this uh, past month, when you look at it with more meters on, and the usage was up, but there are a lot more meters on, is when we got the census back. And notice the census says we have less people, a lot less people, but we have more meters. So I'm thinking one of those isn't working. Somebody in a census did not get to those people, obviously, which it makes sense. But you have quite a few more meters hooked mm-hmm. up, which tells me that, of course, the area is growing. We've got right. more people on. Right. And a little bit more usage. When you get more meters, you're going to have more usage. But remember last year this time, we really weren't doing a lot. We were starting to hear about COVID. You know, mm-hmm. COVID was in full bloom. and right. Starting to hear about how we were going to get out of it and recover and everything was going to be better. Mm-hmm. 
So a lot of people weren't going out and using right. electric. A little bit more now. People are back at work. People are doing, still doing things, so the, the usage is up a bit. But please look at those things because you'll notice that the temperature difference isn't much. But when the amount of electric is used and you've got more meters mm -hmm. and people keep saying, well, who would want to live out here? Well, you got a lot of people who want to live out here. We do. Because there's an increase in the services that Inner County provides. And so I always like to look at that nice little box. It's on the bottom, usually mm -hmm. on the third page, on the bottom right-hand corner mm -hmm. of the Inner County section. And it really is kind of neat to look at that. So if you get a chance, just do that. Yeah. And it's, I'm not saying you got to memorize it. There's no test on it. <laughs> but it is a neat little reminder that shows growth in your area, shows that there is things happening, shows, you know, if there's a big change in temperatures, let's say we've had extremely mm -hmm. cold February or January, if we had a really one, you'd see a temperature differences. And of course, more heat would be used. Right. Um, didn't really have all that this year. The temperatures weren't too much off. But it's always neat to kind of look at that. Just kind of keep an eye on it. it now, is. the neat thing I like about Roundup is the more people, the more Roundup. It is. And that information is kind of right below that area you're talking about that's got the stats. And I wanted to touch on Roundup. Last month you asked, we were talking about the annual meeting challenge from mm -hmm. a few years ago. And so I had to look back at some previous annual meeting minutes. But it looked like back in 2019, our board president at the time, he challenged our members to increase participation in Roundup by 1,000, which we did by annual meeting 2020. But that was the first year we had to have the drive up annual meeting. So... I don't remember that year. I think maybe there were three or four vehicles that yeah, parked okay. and watched the meeting. So Did we decided we decided not to do ice cream, um, that we would wait until we met in person again. Okay. So um, we are scheduled to meet in person this June. And I took a look at our roundup numbers from last June because I thought, well, they may want to say we've just extended the challenge. And if... If that's the case, then by this June, from now until June, we have about 300 accounts that we need to get added to Roundup. If we want to do the increase by 1,000 from two scoops from 2021 to 2022, we've got about 300 more that we need to add, which I think, I mean, it's February by June. Very well if, could happen. If we continue the trend that we've been seeing over the past several years, yes. we will meet that. So Well that's good. So yeah, we'll have we'll have ice cream in we'll June. We'll have a lot of ice cream. Wow. I'm, I'm always fine with ice cream. Well, I didn't think that's you never would a bad that. idea. <laughs> but we do want to remind everybody that this is a roundup day. We do it want is. to remind everybody with Operation Roundup, if you are Finding yourself in a situation due to nothing that you've done wrong. It could be your furnace has gone out. It could be your vehicle has broken down. Something that has just put you in a bind. And then not only that happens, and then the kids get the measles or get quarantined <laughs> and they can't go to school and then they get sick or something. Mm -hmm. it, it can happen. It can, it can. definitely yep. happen just like that. Um, don't forget Roundup is there. Now remember to apply before the end of the previous month. So if you never applied by January 31st, you're going to be looked at today. Right. And we realize if today things start snowballing and you find yourself in a situation where you could use a little bit of help, you can't go back and have your application turned in by the last day of January, but get it turned in this month. And as long as it's turned in by the last day of this month, then it'll be considered at the March meeting, sure. which is always the second Tuesday. And I just want to point out, you know, we talk about Roundup a lot and it's our charitable um, organization. We've done a lot of good. We've been able to help a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times I don't stress enough that this is not an income-based program. It really is just need-based. And I say that because of sort of what you just said. Maybe you've been fine. You can pay your bills. Your family does okay. Mm -hmm. Two incomes or even one income. Your things are working. You're handling it. Your income is fine. But then the vehicle tears down, breaks yeah, down, breaks down. Um, the Can't furnace, even get the parts, the furnace goes out and the kids are quarantined and you've got young kids. And so you have to take off work cause you can't find a babysitter. I mean, we realize things snowball 
and maybe you have an income that is that puts you outside of the eligibility for other assistance programs. Mm-hmm. Roundup's not like that. There's not a magic number that you have to be below in order to qualify. We realize that there are situations that come up that happen that maybe you've been fine and maybe you'll be fine once you get back up on your feet. But Roundup's there, you know, the need has come up and we want to be able to to help with that regardless of where you were six months ago or where you'll be in the next six months. So So don't be afraid to ask. If you need that helping hand today, you know, that's what it's all about. If you find yourself in this maybe month-long slump, put it that way, and you're Mm -hmm. just like, oh, I just don't know where I'm going to turn. Well, don't forget, get that application in. Call Inner County. They can send it to you. They can... Put on your, you can get off uh, your mm-hmm. smart hub, fill it out, get it back to them before the end of the month. That's February mm-hmm. 28th this year, mm-hmm. which is a Monday, by gosh, by golly. And uh, so make sure you get that in by that day so they can consider it March. And then you're going to get a phone call. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to get contacted. You might get more than one phone call, actually. You may get a couple. They might be making sure everything is that you've told them everything that you got all the information. Right. So, right. You know, the, <clears throat> don't be afraid of it. And it's really to get you by that hard time. That's right. what it's all about. Because it's not a program that you sign up for and stay on and they help monthly. This is a one-time assistance. What? Get you out of that, whatever the situation might be, help you over that hump and just kind of get you back on your feet. So, Be sure you contact us and let us know. Like you said, Stan, we'll get an application to you. Multiple ways we can do that. We'll make sure we get one to you. Very good. As always, that's a great tool. So don't forget Mm -hmm. it. And they meet on the same day that we get to talk. That's right. So, hey, hey, hey. Busy day. Always a busy day. Always a busy day. Very good. I have nothing else to add. Do you have something else to add? I wanted to talk about scammers and and the ice creams. And we hit both of those. Oh, man. (laughs) I don't think they go hand in hand. They don't. And ice cream, they don't, but it was two things on my list. Very good. So. Very good. Well, we always thank Heather for coming by or any representative of Inner County when they come by and keep you, you up to date on what's going on with your co op. Uh, very important that you do realize that you are a part of the co op. You don't think you're a customer, you are a member. And I always get corrected for that. So I'm just letting you all know that that's you right. actually have a stake in what goes on. And that's very important. So, if you have a question, you can call Member Services. Which number is? Number is 866-621-3679. Heather had alluded to a number that you can call and make a payment at, and that number is? And this is our automated line, so you're not going to get a live person on this one. So, if you have questions, make sure you call the one I just said. But our toll-free automated line is 888 678-1987. Six seven eight one nine eight seven. You can also pay your bill through your smart hub. You can. And you can do that. It's very easy to do. And uh, if you have any inquiries, you can always send an email you from can. your smart hub yep. as well. Go yep. to Inner County and you can send a question or two there. You might inquire about how much ice cream it's going to take <laughs> to feed everybody. At we the don't know meeting. yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a lot. And whatever's left over, I'm sure Heather and the gang at Inner County will not give it out on second helpings. They'll probably keep it all in that Inner County freezer. Oh, I don't know. We're not that stingy, Stan. I know you're not, but I wouldn't mind reaping the rewards, though. (laughs) Well, I mean, if there's some left over and it ends up at the (laughs) office, I'm not saying I'm going to let it waste, but... Definitely won't throw it out, right? No. Absolutely. Definitely not. As always, we th- appreciate our friends from Inner County right here on KSMO Radio. We do have coming up very shortly here at 1340, a pretty long civic record, and we have so much more on the way. Please keep it here, KSMO Radio. The AM that means music. KSMO Salem. Have you been thinking about...